Welcome everyone to this video which is going to explain everything you need to know about Analog in Ableton Live. When you click on the various parts of the outside, the inside changes. So if I click on the LFO, the LFO settings pop up. If I click on the filters, the filter information pops up. Now the top is lined to be oscillator 1, filter 1, and amp 1, and the bottom is oscillator 2, filter 2, and amp 2. The LFOs are together, but there's LFO 1 and LFO 2. We also have global parameters over here, and then a noise generator all the way over here, which does not have an inner shell part. So let's turn off oscillator 2 for now, and click on oscillator 1's shell. Just to the right of oscillator 1's on and off button is the volume level, so you can turn it up or down. Let's leave it at 0 dB. Right below that is the filter selection where you're selecting whether it's going to filter 1 or filter 2. Right now it's being fully sent to filter 1, but as I bring this down, you'll see now it's 79% going to filter 1 and 21% going to filter 2. If I bring it all the way to the bottom, it's only being sent to filter 2. Over here we have some waveforms. We have sine wave, saw wave, square, or what they call rectangle, and then white noise. If you have the rectangle selected, the pulse width over here lights up. At 100% it's a square wave, but as you bring it down it's a variation of a pulse wave, or what they call rectangle. Last one's white noise. and a saw wave, which is what I'm going to leave it at right now. We also have the ability to adjust the pitch by octaves, semitones, the detune knob detunes it by cents, up to a maximum of 300 cents in either direction, positive or negative. On the inner part, you see we have the pitch envelope and the time which is the starting pitch and the amount of time it takes to get back to the normal pitch. So if I bring this all the way up, and the amount of time it takes to get there, <laughs> well, let's put those back to zero for now. You can modulate the pulse width and the pitch with the LFO down here. But that's only if the LFO is turned on. Oh, in order for pulse width to be modulated, you have to have it on square or rectangle. And then we have sub sync. When it's set to sub, it adds a sub bass one octave below. If it's set to square wave or saw wave, the sub will be a square wave. But if it's set to sine wave, the sub is a sine wave. Now you can turn oscillator 1 off, and you can just use the noise feature over here, which is just white noise. The color is its own independent filter cutoff. There's a volume control, and you can also send it to either filter 1 or filter 2. Let's turn that off again and turn on oscillator 1. Now let's move over to the filter after I change that to saw wave. So we have a variety of filters. We can do low pass, band pass, notch, high pass, and format filters. We have 12 dB per octave, 24 dB per octave, and then for band pass, 6 dB per octave, which is just the slope of the filter. If you want that classic Moog sound, then use the 24 dB per octave. But if you want something a little more gentler, then use 12. The frequency cutoff is here. Resonance right next to it. And then down below we have our envelope. Attack, decay, sustain, release. We have the option to choose a linear mode or exponential. 
They both accomplish the same goal, but they sound different. So try both out. So let me give you a demonstration of how to control this. Let me turn the envelope up. Maximum is 16. Let's not bring it all the way up. I'm going to leave it at 14 for now. Leave the frequency down pretty low. So now the filter is going to follow the envelope. The attack is the amount of time it takes to get from the darkest point to the brightest point. Maybe linear would be better to show this. See, it starts off dark and then ends up being bright at the end. Decay is the opposite. Decay is the amount of time it takes to get from the brightest point to the level of the sustain, which is now at zero. So it's going to be going from the brightest back down to the darkest. Let me shorten this up. See, it starts off bright and then eventually fades to dark. But again, it's the level of the sustain. So if I change the level of the sustain to be higher, then when I hold the note, it stays at that level of bright or darkness. With the sustain all the way up, the decay is doing nothing. And then when I let go of the note, that's where the release takes place. If the release is set to instant, then the moment I let go, it returns back to darkness and we stop hearing it. Let me increase it a little bit. For the sake of demonstration, it was a lot easier to show linear. Since the LFO is already on, let's turn on frequency modulation, LFO 1, down here. Right now it's being manipulated by hertz, so it's 1.5 hertz. But let's change that to match the tempo of the song. You can also change the waveform. It has sine, triangle, and rectangle again, and then two forms of noise. The first one is a stepped noise, and the second one is a more smoothed noise. Let me, let me show you what I mean. It's a lot smoother than being stepped. See, it's more rigid. So triangle is very similar to saw wave. Right now, the width is at 50%, making it a triangle. But as we change the width, it turns into an up and down saw wave. Rectangle works the same way. At 50%, it's a square wave. But as we adjust it, we're adjusting the pulse width. Let's turn the LFO off again for now. Oh, I forgot to mention, there's also attack and delay for the LFO. By adding delay, you're causing a pause before the LFO starts to take place. While the attack is adjusting the amount of time it takes to get from no modulation to full modulation. Now let's go over to the amp one section. We have a pan option. 
and then level again to change the volume. We have the same attack, decay, sustain, release of the envelope, except instead of dark at the bottom to bright at the top, it's quiet or no volume at the bottom to maximum loudness at the top.